Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Miss Lana Turner in The Flame Blue Glove, a transcribed suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Now, let's see. Are we going to put the tree over there again? Uh Uh-huh. And we'll have Santa Claus hang presents for Uncle John, Cousin Joey. Oh, I'm going to ask Santa Claus to fill their stockings with Autolite resistor spark plugs. Look, honey, you're home. This is me, your wife. You can get away from business. Business? It's a pleasure to give such a Christmas present. But, Hollow, Christmas is a time for sentiment. Sentiment? Sure. Why, John and Joy will love us because Autolite resistor spark plugs will make their cars idle smoother and give better performance on leaner gas mixtures, actually save gas. Oh, my goodness. Ohm is the secret, all right. That exclusive built-in 10,000-ohm Autolite resistor. Only Autolite resistor spark plugs have it. What a life. Now you're talking. Autolite resistor spark plugs have 200% longer electrode life. Cut down spark plug interference with radio and television, too. Why, Uncle John and Cousin Joy will say, just as I do, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the flame blue glove, and with the performance of Lana Turner, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense! The trouble is, you never had any feelings, Dutch. You don't know what it is to feel, not like other people feel. You've spent too much time looking out at the world through dirty windows... I never liked working for your detective agency. I never liked you, Dutch. I never liked you at all. This is my last case. And this is my last report. You'll have to train someone else to go out and get tangled up in other people's lives. I thought I was through working for you when I married Jimmy Conway. But I was wrong. You showed up again last week. I was working in my garden. Even above the smell of the roses, I could smell trouble. Hello, Shadow. What? Dutch! Where did you come from? Just in the neighborhood. Here, give me those things. What do you know about a rose bush? I know this one's got thrips. Trim it, use nicotine spray for a week or ten days, clear it up just like that. (laughs) Death, taxes, and Dutch. You know everything. You haven't changed a bit. Same pipe, same awful tobacco. Uh, how's the detective business? I miss you, Shadow. You're the best operative I ever had. Oh, I'm flattered, Dutch. This gilded cage stuff okay? Gardens, clothes, car, time on your hands. You really like it? What do you think? Would you rather be a lady detective if you were me? Maybe. I don't know. You wouldn't be interested in working on a case, would you? I am now a happily married bride working on keeping her handsome husband. (laughs) Besides, my license expired. You could fix that. This one's right up your alley, Shadow. You did the groundwork when you were with me. Sorry. I know the case was closed, but it's been nagging me. I still think it was murder. Uh, What case are you talking about? The Conway case. Mrs. Conway. I looked at you. You weren't kidding but you were smiling. And you only smile when something might go wrong for somebody. Yeah, I still believe your husband killed his first wife. Hate me? Who hired you? Nobody, just nagged by the fact, Shadow. Eloise Conway, wealthy wife of not-so-wealthy Jim Conway, drinks ten dissolved sleeping tablets New Year's Eve. Coroner's jury says suicide. I just can't buy it. The police accepted the coroner's verdict. That day at the coroner's inquest, you disappointed me, Shadow, refusing to go on the stand. You'd been tailing him for two months. You could have told about his three lady friends. Telling those things to a coroner's jury wouldn't have helped one way or the other. Jimmy's clean and decent Dutch. He He would have been arrested on suspicion of murder if you'd spoken up. Those girls meant nothing to him. They were just friends. Maybe, and he might have fed her those pills so he could have one of those friends. Then why did he marry me instead of whoever it was? You saved his hide, pigeon. You didn't tell the coroner about his friends. Maybe he married you to play it safe for a while. Maybe... Jimmy had nothing to do with Eloise's death. You know, I keep thinking what she said when she hired us. How did she put it? Uh, Yeah. Jimmy married me for my money. He was in love with somebody else. As soon as he thought it was safe, he went back to her. Went back to who? Who do you mean? Want to work on the case with me? No. No, I don't. Shadow, did you ever stop to think what might happen to you if he isn't innocent? If you let some little suspicion slip out somewhere and he gets it into his head, but... (laughs) Doesn't it ever scare you? That song's 
just right, darling. Oh, Jimmy, you're home early. No, no, please, keep playing. Did I ever tell you I love you? You wouldn't if you knew how really bad I am. But I love you. <laughs> well, you certainly know how bad I am. I'll bet there isn't a husband in the country married to the girl who tailed him all over town before she... Please, Jimmy. Well, I'm sorry. We've kidded about this before, I think. Uh, it's just that I've had a bad day, that's all. My fault. Oh, you're trembling. Oh, poor darling. Sarah? Yes, Jimmy? Maybe you stay around this house too much. Or maybe it's around you too much. What do you mean? After all has happened here. This is where Eloise died. I, I just thought maybe it gives you the creeps to live here. We can sell it, darling. Get another place. Oh, no, Jimmy. This is our house now. I never was really jealous of Eloise. Well, there's nobody else. But, Jimmy, when Eloise did what she did, you had other friends... Now, Sarah. Were you in love with any of those girls? Kathy Dane, you used to sit around that nightclub listening to her sing. And Judy... Sarah, I never loved anyone. Not Kathy, not Judy, not Eloise, anyone. Until I met you. You believe that, don't you, Sarah? I want to, Jimmy. I want to so much. The next afternoon, walking down Hollywood Boulevard, I saw an ugly second-floor office, and there was an ugly sign to go with it. Dutch Detective Service. I came up to see you, Dutch, to tell you to drop it. I won't drop it. They blow their heads off and take poison and jump off of buildings and chew sleeping tablets. But they don't go around hiring detectives to watch their husbands before they do it. Eloise Conway was bumped, and I'm going to find out about it. You're not going to pin it on Jimmy. He didn't have anything to do with it. If he didn't, one of his little friends did. Look, these old reports of yours include the names of three dames he went out with while you were tailing him. Yes, that's right. A torch singer named Kathy Dane, his private secretary, Millicent Taylor, and a Miss Million Dollars named Judy Fleetwood. And what about them? Look, Dutch, I asked Jimmy about those girls last night. They didn't mean anything to him. A woman knows her husband. Yeah, well, I know a woman. And if they want a guy bad enough, they'll kill for him. And one of them left this glove on the floor of the bedroom the night our client passed away. Oh, that old glove. The police weren't even interested in it as evidence. Well, I am. The police didn't have any Cinderella's to fit it on because you didn't mention Jimmy's girlfriends at the inquest. Which one of them does it fit, Shadow? Size six and a half. Commonest size in the world. Fit anybody. Look, even fits me, Dutch. Well, the color's a little unusual. You'll grant me that? Flame blue? Yes, I guess so. All right. If we find the partner to this glove, we've got something. You gonna help? I, I can't. All right. There's other female ops in this burg. I kind of thought you'd like to do it. You know, see that your husband's handled fair and square, no frames or anything like that. Oh, all right, Dutch. I'll give it a whirl. Good. But in a week, you'll come to me and tell me I was right. That Jimmy's innocent. Oh, I'm sure I will, Shadow. I'm sure I will. Autolite is bringing you Miss Lana Turner in The Flame Blue Glove. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Carlo, if you're through rhapsodizing about Autolite resistor spark plugs, I'd like to plan out the rest of our Christmas. Oh, sure, of course. Now, I've asked Aunt Helen to drive over for the day. Aunt Helen? I haven't seen her for a long time. Wonder if she's got Autolite resistor spark plugs in her car. Everybody else is dreaming of a white Christmas. Not my husband, Harlow. He's dreaming of an Autolite Christmas. I'll tell Aunt Helen that with Autolite resistor spark plugs, her car will idle smoother, give better performance on leaner gas mixtures, actually save her gas. Look, my super sales. I'll tell her that Autolite resistor spark plugs never worry radio and television reception, that they have 200% longer electrode life. Yeah, I know. What a Christmas party we'll have. I'll bet Aunt Helen's eyes will light up like the famous Autolite bullseye headlights. Then I suppose you'll tell her to get a set of Autolite resistor spark plugs at her dealer's? No, no, I'll have a set on the tree for her. Or maybe she'd prefer the famous regular type Autolite spark plugs, long recognized for their dependability. 
Well, anyway, it's a present you can't go wrong with because you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star Lana Turner in The Flame Blue Glove, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. May I help you, please? I want to buy some gloves, a size six and a half. Certainly. Any particular shade in mind? Uh, yes, blue. Blue? Yes, of course. Here's a lovely shade, hand-stitched. I was thinking of, well, more of a flame blue. Flame blue. Oh, I'm afraid... Oh, I do happen to have a pair. Six and a half? Yes. Here you are. What about these? Yes. Yes, that's the pair, exactly what I want. Oh, don't wrap them. I'll wear them. Lovely for cocktails. Yes, that's what I'm going to use them for. Mrs. Wingate? Yes, I'm Mrs. Wingate. Oh, won't you sit down, please, Miss Dane? I've always admired your singing so much. I've always been a fan of yours. Kathy Dane records are favorites with all my friends. Oh, I took the liberty of ordering martinis. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wingate. I don't go on here for another half hour. Oh, I didn't come to hear you sing this time, Miss Dane. I came to ask you a favor. Oh? I want you to sing at a party I'm giving next month at my Bel Air home. Well, I'm flattered, but I'm afraid I couldn't possibly accept any private engagements. Oh, uh... Oh, I wish you'd reconsider. It's such a special occasion for a very dear friend who's spoken of you. Oh, who? Jimmy Conway. Jimmy? Yes. He's my neighbor. You know, he's been through so much in the last year with Eloise's death and everything. I felt this party might... You, uh... You know Jimmy's wife? Yes, I've met Sarah. She's very nice. I'm glad. For Jimmy... I know I talk too much, but since I've met you, I can't help wondering why you and Jimmy... Never... It's really quite simple, Mrs. Wingate. I'm a singer. I need backing. Jimmy couldn't help me then. He didn't have the money he inherited when his... Well, anyway, by the time I got my backing, what's her name? Sarah had come between us. I never met her, but... Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. Did any get on you? No, no, but I'm afraid those beautiful gloves of yours are ruined. Oh, what a shame. Well, I hope it won't take the color out. Flame blue is my favorite. <laughs> Mine, too, I guess. I had some gloves pretty much like those ones. Oh, really? I lost one of them. Oh, really? Well, I've ruined one here. Perhaps we could make a pair between us. Which one did you lose? <laughs> oh, I can tell by just looking at yours they'd be too small. I wear a seven and three quarters glove. Have to have them made to order. My piano teacher used to call me ham hands. Sorry, I'm not your girl. No, I'm afraid you're not. No, she wasn't, Dutch. I'd played the scene well. Smart. Oh, you'd have been proud of me, Dutch. It wasn't easy. Because I was playing with my own life. My happiness. But I did it just the way you taught me. And I gave you the report just the way you taught me. All facts, no emotion. All right, Shadow, so it isn't Kathy Dane. But that glove fits somebody. Dutch, I hate it. I'm shaking from it. Oh, Jimmy will know I'm up to something. Look, drop the whole thing. I, I'll give you 15000 I have in my checking I account. I want more than that. Dutch, I won't let you break this up for me. Jimmy and I have too much. You mean you're going to try hanging on to him and his money even if fellow was murdered? Stop it! You... That make you feel better? <sighs> I'm sorry. Okay. One down and two to go. A secretary and a grass widow. Who's first, Shadow? I'm so tired, Dutch. Sure, kid, sure. You need a good night's sleep. I'll drive you home. Oh, by the by, do you sleep good in that house? Very well. Just ask, Shadow. Just ask. <laughs> You drove me home. I don't know what I was thinking to let you do it. When we got there, we spent an hour sitting in the car while you gave me all the details about Millicent Taylor again. She'd been Jimmy's secretary for four years. 
She'd been out of town at the time of Eloise's death. You wanted to know where. We said goodnight finally. You drove off. Evening, Sarah. <gasps> Since one of the taxis been slipping up to the house without lights? Oh, Jimmy. Didn't you get my message? I'm sure, darling. You wouldn't be home for dinner. Why are you so nervous? Who'd you have dinner with? Oh, uh, uh, Louise Gowans. You remember Louise. Uh, she just got in from Honolulu. Oh, how is Lou? Oh, fine. Fine, Jim. She asked about you. Well? What is it, darling? Don't you kiss your husband when you get home? Oh, of course. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Are you smoking a new brand of cigarettes or something? No, I... Oh, your hair's full of a... Tobacco smell I seem to remember from somewhere. Oh, the cab driver was smoking a pipe. Oh, and... I remember now. That man you used to work for, he smoked an awful tobacco that I could It's just an old, cheap brand. So two people smoke it. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> I was too clever for him, the way you taught me to be clever. And the next day, Dutch, I used everything you taught me. I had to. Because on my way back from Hollywood, I noticed that a gray coupe had turned with me off the boulevard. I noticed it because it looked exactly like my old car that I sold when I got married. And when it turned with me again at sunset and followed me out to Laurel, I knew that it was tailing me. Oh, I used what you taught me so well, Dutch. I time tracked lights, dodged up narrow streets, and got away from them. I would have taken his license number and looked him up, Dutch, but I had other things to do first. Things like playing sick, playing a scene for my husband's secretary. Come in. Oh, Millicent. Millicent, it was so sweet of you to come. Sit over here by the bed. Are you ill, Mrs. Conway? Oh, migraine headaches. Unbearable sometimes. Oh? Jane. Oh, but I never let Jimmy know about them. Sick wives are such a nuisance to a man. Yes, they certainly are. Uh, I called you, Millicent, because I've been planning a surprise for Jim's birthday. A costume party. And you want me to call it off? All right. What guests are coming oh, no. and what... No, no, I don't want to call it off. Jimmy needs relaxation. I wondered if you'd uh, play hostess for me. Me? Hostess? Well, if the stupid headache persists, it would oh, be a great favor to me. And I know Jim would like it. Say you will, please. Well, really, Mrs. Conway, I... Oh, I... please, now. Well, I, I have a costume. I don't know what... Well, mine's in the closet. I got it from Hollywood Costumers today. It would fit you. Which one? Uh, the colonial oh, with oh, the... Oh, yes, yes. Well, it, it's lovely, Mrs. Conway. Oh, you'd look beautiful in it. I'd almost be afraid to let Jimmy see you wearing it. Would you? Now, the only thing it needs is some blue gloves. A flame blue, don't you think? Of course, they're rather difficult to well, find. Well, that's no problem. I think I know... Yes? <laughs> You're clever, aren't you, Mrs. Conway? How do you mean? You aren't like Eloise. Migraine headaches. She'd have called him away from work a couple of days to nurse her. She was that kind of wife. You're very fond of my husband, aren't you, Millicent? Yes. Yes, I am. Are you in love with him? Yes. Last winter it got so bad that I had to go to a sanitarium for a while. Oh, you poor dear. <laughs> Everyone thought I was spending the holidays with my sister. When I came back, a lot of things had happened. Eloise had committed suicide and... And I was married to Jimmy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here. But aren't you going to take the costume with you? I've got a feeling you'll be up and around by party time. If there is a party. Oh, uh, just in case you want to check it. On New Year's Eve, I was in Riverview Sanitarium, Mrs. Conway. Goodbye. <laughs> Just another secretary carrying a torch for a boss. Another bad lead, Dutch. You checked on it next morning. Well, that's that, Shadow. Okay. But there's still the grass widow. She's smart. Judy Fleetwood. Look, she was in Reno getting a divorce. Plain when... service is good, and that glove might fit her. Okay. 
Well, anyway, we're getting near the end, aren't we? You won't say uncle, will you, Dutch? Nope. I drove over to Encino to Judy Fleetwood's ranch, a big rambling place that sprawled over several acres, complete with stables, swimming pool, and pictures. The one above the mantel was an oil of Judy herself. But a modest photograph on the desk below was the real eye catcher. It was Jimmy. So you're Sarah Conway. Yes. Well, this is cozy. Sarah the winner. Judy the loser meet like two ladies and talk about the battle. What do you have? Oh, nothing, thank you. No, oh, prim, too. Cheers, Toots. What are you doing here? Well, I'd, I'd like to have you over for dinner. Say, tomorrow night? I think that would be positively nostalgic. Want me to bring someone with me? If you wish, yes. Well, the guy across the road just left his wife. Shall I bring him along? Well, anyone you want. Yeah. You know what? I only wanted one guy and you got him. Have a drink. This is quite an occasion, meeting you after seeing so much of you. After seeing so much of me? Sure. Last year, every time I was out with Jimmy, I'd see you lurking in the bushes somewhere. Where's your magnifying glass and bloodhound? I didn't like doing it, Miss Fleetwood. It was a job. You made it pay off, honey. Oh, come off it. Tailing a man, getting the dope on his private life, then scaring him into marriage. That's a lie. It is it? Night Eloise died, I went to see her. You... You were with her the night she died? That's what I said. And she told me she was more scared of you than any of us. Oh, you're good, sister. You're real good. But you're not going to keep him. You hear me? It would have been me if you hadn't interfered. Give it to me. Dutch, Judy Fleetwood was there the night Eloise died. She told me so herself. That's how smart she is. Good. Anything else? Well, I didn't get a chance to find out about the glove. I got so I mad. I found the glove, Shadow. What? Yeah, the other flame blue glove. Well, where'd you find Where it? Where every dame, even the smartest one, can lose a glove when she's driving a car. Tucked down on the cushions. Oh, I see. Cost me a lot of time and money, Shadow, but I expect to get it back. The girl who owned that car got lots of money. Loaded. Well, what happens now? We'll wind it up tonight, Shadow. You know that little house outside the gate to the Fleetwood Dame's place? Yes. Meet you there Sarah. at nine. Oh, I have to hang up. Sarah. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Dameron. Sarah. Who are you talking with? Oh, just a friend. Jimmy, do you think I'm lying? Two nights ago, you were having dinner with Louise Cowens. She'd just come in from Hawaii? Yes. Louise called me at the office today. She tried to get you at home. She told me she just got in today from New York. Well, Sarah? I hoped you wouldn't catch me, darling. Actually, I had to meet a man. Well, it was for your birthday. A surprise. It's hard to keep up with you sometimes, Sarah. Who do we know drives a great coupe? I know you once owned one, but I... Well, I'm sure I don't know. Coming home twice now, I've seen him sitting and it seemed to be interested in our house. Thought he might be your doctor. My doctor? Oh, what are you talking about, Jimmy? Migraine headaches, darling. Oh. Millicent shouldn't have mentioned it. They're really nothing. It's funny. Eloise used to have migraines. Here. What are those? Take two of these. Put you right to sleep. I don't want you to suffer anymore. You shouldn't take too many of these, of course. Well, that's awfully sweet, Jimmy, but I feel perfectly fine. Do as I say. Here, take them. But Jimmy did. All right. Now, go on up to bed. Sarah, I'm sorry I found out about my birthday surprise. Yes, darling. I'll have to plan a surprise for you someday, won't I? <laughs> On the sleeping pills, of course. Another little trick you taught me. I waited in my room 20 minutes. I could hear Jimmy listening outside my door. Then I quietly dialed the operator and told him my phone seemed to be out of order and asked her to call me back. As soon as it rang and I heard Jimmy race to answer downstairs, I was down the back stairs and out of the house. I was still 10 minutes early for our appointment at Judy Fleetwood's. I was quite calm. The night was dark. And I had my gun. I stood in the shadows and waited for you. I expected to hear your car first, but you fooled me, Dutch. I couldn't make out the shadow across the driveway, but I could smell the pipe smoke, and I fired. <laughs> Dutch! 
Dutch! Dutch! All right, Shadow. Oh. Oh, drop it. Dutch! I said drop it. You never did learn how to shoot a gun, did you, Shadow? But you learned everything else. It's money you want, isn't it, Dutch? What good would it do me, Shadow? I'd be asking for something like this every time I came around to collect from you. And you might learn to shoot straight after a while. So, this is it, Dutch. This is it, baby. I've got the glove in your old car, the mate to the one you left in Eloise's room the night you fed her those pills. Even got you now on attempted murder. Nothing much for me to say, is there? Nope. That enough for you, Lieutenant? I guess it is. Sarah Oliver Conway... You're under arrest for the murder of Eloise Conway. Jimmy came to see me today. He said you phoned him yesterday and told him I would attempt to kill you because you were closing in on me for Eloise's murder. Dutch, Jimmy gave me two sleeping pills after he talked to you. He was trying to keep me from doing anything until he could think of some way out of all this. But... You wouldn't understand what that means to me, I guess. You never loved anybody, Dutch. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Lana Turner. Well, Harlow, with all your talk about Autolite resistor spark plugs, I still love you. Ah, you're a swell wife. One in a million. Just like Autolite, resistor spark plugs are one of more than 400 products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, and bullseye sealed beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts, at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, Eddie Cantor will be our star. The play is called Double Entry. And it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's transcribed Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. The Flame Blue Glove is an original radio play by Lois E.B. and John C. Fleming, adapted for Suspense by E. Jack Newman. Lana Turner appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Dor Sherry's Battleground, starring Van Johnson, John Hodiak, Ricardo Montalban, and George Murphy. For the second consecutive year, Lana Turner has been named the most popular star by the readers of Modern Screen magazine, in its motion picture popularity poll. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as Ida Lupino, Danny Kaye, and Ozzie and Harriet Nelson. Don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Eddie Cantor. You can buy Autolite resistor or regular spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite... Good night. Friends, once again, the Salvation Army is busy bringing new hope and cheer to many less fortunate than ourselves. Help where you can. Help the Salvation Army help others. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>